Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the brand new Western Alliance Era 3 Premium Tank Destroyer, the Leopard 2 KWS-3. If you do like the video, as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below as it really does help out the channel. And yes, the Leopard KWS-3. What's it like? Well, it's a pretty good tank. Its mobility is pretty good. You can get it up to 75 kilometers an hour with a traction system and it will hit it. You've got a pretty damn nice gun that's fairly accurate. It's got good alpha. It's got good penetration. And you've got good turret armor with the hull armor of a Leopard 2. So if you know what the Leopard 2 hull armor is like, that is what you're going to get from it. The two things that are, fair, that are not that great about it is the fact that its track traverse isn't that great and you don't turn very quickly, which is a pain when having to deal with all the weasels flying about. And the gun depression at 6 degrees can be a little bit limiting. The other thing is, is that would I recommend it? I wouldn't, because number one, Era 3 isn't that great of a place to play anyway. And number two is the fact that it's so expensive. So the tank is, if we go have a look at it, 17,300 gold, which is an expensive pickup. So I'd always recommend for you guys to wait for bundles, for sales, for all that good stuff, because 17,300 gold is way too much money to spend on this game, and any game really, for a downloadable content. And you should just, yeah wait for discounts but it is far too expensive in terms of how it plays it's pretty good at what it does it can deal with most things it's going to face it's just the problem that there are it's, it's an era three where you got to face billions of mallows and weasels about that just trash everything really and the fact that it, for context i just don't like era three i think it's a really not a great place to play so it probably will skew it a little bit but anyway let's get into the statistics of the leopard kws3 so we've got here 1500 horsepower engine with a 68.4 km an hour top speed and a 32.2 km an hour reverse speed with 24 horsepower per ton ratio, which means you will hit the 68 km an hour top speed, no problem whatsoever, you, which you don't. Generally, you do hit the top speed, especially if you put on the traction system and go at 75 km an hour, you do hit it. And the 32 km an hour reverse speed is also fantastic as well. You got a 10% internal fire chance, which is actually on the low end of the fire chances. I haven't really been set on fire yet in this thing, so good going so far. You've got 3,950 hit points, which is a solid slab of hit points to use. It's actually on the higher end for Era 3, which means you can trade really effectively with how high your alpha is and stuff like that, which is quite nice. 26 degrees a second on the hull rotation speed is where it is exceptionally slow. It's definitely not nice, and it's a bit of a pain in that regard. You've got 2.2 on soft, 1.3 on medium, and 1.1 on firm, which for Era 3 isn't the best of ground resistances in the universe. You might want to help that. It's down to you. You've got 439 meters of still concealment. You are a tank destroyer, so you can get that down way lower if you use food and... Not food. Smoke and the camouflage net. But I wouldn't recommend that. I'd just recommend to set it up like an attacking MBT because that's what it is. It's an, it's an MBT. I mean, realistically, you know, tank classes in Era 3 don't count for anything because light tanks, tank destroyers, heavy tanks, etc. don't exist in that sort of era. It's, it's an MBT is what it is, and it's a hard-hitting one at that. So you want to set it up to be able to use the gun and just slap out those rounds. You've got 535 meters of view range, which is okay for Era 3, which, again, you've got true vision, so you don't really have to focus on it too much. You've got 40 degrees of turret traverse, which is very, very nice. It's way quicker than the track, so your turret does snap round, which is good. You've got 1.39 accuracy during rotation, which is isn't the best you want to help that out with the gun stabilizer and the crew skills if you can 20 degrees of elevation and six degrees of gun depression like i said the six degrees of gun depression is a little bit limiting for this tank it's there's a lot of other tanks that have got like that eight nine ten degrees and they are far more flexible on the ridge line than you are with six you've got 11.1 .1 second reload which is 3.7k dpm which is okay you can get that down to about i think it was nine seconds reload something like that with all the stuff we've got. We'll see when we fully equipped out stats. You've got 0.29 accuracy on base. Which is pretty good. Pretty good. You've got 2.5 second aim time. Which is a little bit slow. That is definitely a little bit slow on the aim time. And when you are coming to a full stop. It can feel a little bit slow just to get zoomed in. But at the same time. It's with the... Accuracy during rotation at 2.38, which you get down really quite low, same as the turret rotation. The gun doesn't bloom out that much, so you don't really feel the 2.5 aim time all that much, realistically. You've got 40 ammo capacity, which can be a little bit limiting at times, because of how many shells you want to take in between the two different rounds. But you've got APFS, DS, and you've got HESH, which means that you can deal with Malos with the HE. You do want to take some HE just so you can deal with some Malos, stuff like that, especially if you need to just kill something that's like two, 300 damage. You can shoot it with the Hesh, which is really nice that it's got Hesh and not Heat. You've got 
844 pen on its standard APFS DS round, and you've got 320 pen on the Hesh round, which is actually really, really good. And that means that you'll be able to pen the rear of most of the, the MBTs in the era, but you'll also be able to pen most of the light tanks, which is also glorious. And it's quite a useful tactic to load it against weasels, because realistically, unless you hit the tracks of a weasel, you are going to pen them with 320. And if you don't pen them for 870 damage, you're probably going to track them with the splash, which is always great because you get rid of those little pests. You've got 700 alpha on your standard APFS DS as well, which is pretty nice. I wish it was slightly higher, like to match some of the other tanks, but it's still 700 alpha. You can't moan, can you? You can't moan at that. It's pretty damn good, especially with the 844 penetration. 2,000 meters a second shell velocity on the APFS DS, by the way, is phenomenal. It's fantastic at shooting at range for that. And you've got 1,350 meters a second shell velocity on the HE rounds or the HESH rounds, which is also really, really good anyway, but it's far slower than the standard APFS DS, so bear in mind that it will be slower. And you've got 165% silver bonus, which means the other bonus to this tank is that it makes a lot of silver, and it does make a lot of silver. Obviously, it helps that it doesn't have a premium round. It only has a standard HE and a standard APFS DS round, so you will make a lot of credits in this tank, which is definitely something that's great, but you really should for how much it costs. So, yeah. And then a quick look at the armor, like I say, just so you can get a good viewing of how the armor profile looks. You've got 650 on that turret there, which is the base turret armor, by the way, with a little bit on the gun mantlet. And then if we were to actually go down, you should see extra spacing somewhere along here. There is so many armor panels. There you go, 50 millimeters. So it's 650 millimeters on that turret front before they actually penetrate the armor. But then you've got an extra 50 millimeters of spaced on the front as well, which is a lot of armor for that turret front. If they shoot you anywhere on the turret, most of the time they are probably going to bounce. Only really Malos and 292s are going to shred that. And even then they still might bounce, which is quite nice. But 900 pen obviously is 900 pen. And even if you're shooting yourself in the turret front, if you hit anywhere that's a little bit flatter, like you can see that point there on the turret, if you were to shoot this and hit the flatter part, there is ever, every chance that you could go through because naturally the angles on the armor make a big difference to how effective it is. So if you hit the flatter sections, that's where it's going to be more like its base thickness. So that's something you might want to think about when you shoot this thing. And in terms of the other stuff that people like to see, if we go to the module viewer, there's the ammo racks, which is a bit of a problem for this tank, same as the Leopard 2. If they shoot you through the upper or lower plate, which a lot of tanks can do these days because they've got like eight to 900 pen, like this thing can go straight through its own upper plate and straight through its own lower plate, and they shoot you on that right-hand side, they are going to damage your ammo rack. If they shoot you in the back of the turret, they'll damage your ammo rack. So you've got to be very, very careful of that. And the engine block, as you can see, is on the side points of that turret there. Sorry, on the hull, sorry. And on the back of the turret... Back of the turret? I keep saying the turret! No! The hull! <laughs> we'll get there in the end. Brain farts, eh? And yeah, so if you are shooting this thing and you shoot it at that central midpoint there, you're probably going to set it on fire if you're not careful. But yeah... Let's have a look at what I run in terms of equipment and a commander for this tank. So I run food to make sure that everything is as good as possible for it. The advanced loader to make the DPM better. The gun stabilizer because I really want to make the gun as good as it can be because it's all about how hard this gun hits. And the traction system to make sure that I go faster. But not just that, it's the extra track traverse that I want. I really want the extra track traverse if I can get it. Because, yeah, it's not, it's not very nice. The track traverse on this tank is very, very slow even when you've got it fully kitted out. I mean, there's... Other ways you could run it as well, if you weren't bothered and you think, oh, okay, it's slow at turning, I'll, I'll accept that. You could run the vents instead to make everything about the tank better. If you feel like the engine power isn't good enough, you could run the powertrain instead to get extra speed and horsepower. If the aim time is annoying you, you could run the gun lane drive to make the aim time better. It's down to you. Or if you want to make use of the hesh rounds and not have to reload, you could run the advanced reload as well. There's plenty of things you can run on this tank. It's down to you and how you feel comfortable playing a tank. I have stuck the crew for it in the MBT-80. So let's go have a look at the crew that I run on this Leopard KWS-3. So I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Six Sense, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, Trap Mechanic, Clutch Breaking, Dead Eye. Dead Eye for the memes, realistically. There's probably other perks that you could take instead of that, but I'd run that because we've got such a high caliber gun and we've got high alpha, so that I'm trying to make it so that I'm more likely to do stuff like set fires, damage ammo racks, all that good stuff, which can really turn the tide of a fight in Era 3. I run Clutch Breaking because, like I said, the track traverse is awful. I want to make sure that the track traverse is better. The track 
mechanic to be able to get my tracks back on 25% faster because you will be stuck in brawls and it's nice to get your tracks back on especially if you see a weasel coming and you've already used your repair kit it's nice to be able to know that you're not going to be sat there for ages with your tracks waiting to get them back on the three gun perks like i say just to make the gun as good as it humanly can be and these three you're always going to take in any area anywhere in this game realistically but yeah, instead of Deadeye, you could run Rapid Aim to make the track traverse better. If you feel like the ground resistances are holding you back a little bit, you could take Off-Road Driving. You could take the Armor Angling to reduce the amount of damage you're taking. Supply Conservation to make sure you get food back as quickly as possible. You could take Mark Target to keep things lit up a little bit longer, because things obviously do get unspotted very, very quickly in Cold War. Or you could take Situational Awareness to make it so that your view range is better, so that you can spot things at a bigger distance. It's completely down to you and how you want to set up your tank, but that's just how I run it for my comfortability. comfortability. There we go. So in terms of the fully equipped stats, I do run... Well, as you can see, sorry. We've got 31.17 hull rotation speed now, which is fantastic. Well, it's not fantastic. It's still very slow. But it's a lot better than the 26 it was. So that's what we've managed to get from helping it out. We've got 581 meters of view range, 43.44 degrees a second on the turret rotation speed, which is still way quicker than the tracks, which is pretty decent. 0.74 accuracy during rotation, which is way down from the 1.39, was it? Something like that. Way, way, way down, which means the gun doesn't bloom out that badly. 8.1 second reload now, which is, okay, it's way faster than I thought it was. 8.1 second reload, which you can get even faster with a food boost. You've got 0.23 accuracy at 100 meters, which is really good. 1.49 accuracy during movement, again, is is really damn solid. And you've down an extra 1.1. 1. 1. Yeah, no, an extra 1, wasn't it, from what it was, base. 2.3 second aim time now instead of 2.5, which is better, but can still feel a little bit long in Era 3. And you've got that 5.1k DPM now, which is... Really damn solid, realistically, for the Leopard 2KWS. Like I said, the, the tank itself is actually pretty damn good. It's just a shame that it's in Era 3, where Era 3 is not that great, realistically. And as a tank as well, it's another tank that just, sadly, for I'm I'm looking at you, Mr. MBT-70. It, it just sadly invalidates the MBT-70. I just, I just feel like the MBT-70 now is in a really, really sad place. Obviously, that was one of the first tanks that came out. It does have a machine gun now on it, but... This tank, because of the way it's, it was the first tank to be really high alpha, right, for Era 3. And it was sort of the balancing factor of the fact that was you had lower pen. But now there are so many tanks that have that high alpha. And they just have way better guns than you. They reload faster than you. <laughs> like, if you think about the KWS-3, it reloads a whole second faster than you. The gun handling is better as well. The hull armor is better because this thing has no armor. The only thing that this thing has is it goes as backwards, backwards as fast as it goes forwards. I do feel sad for the balancing sometimes of some of the tanks that were earlier, like the MBT-70, because they are really, really left in the dust. But without without anything else, that is the KWS-3 in the garage. It is, like I say, it's a pretty good tank for what it is. And you, uh, you if you wanted to pick it up, I don't think you could go wrong with it. If you do own the Thumper, I will say that the Thumper is very, very similar to it. And you will get the exact same playstyle out of the Thumper as you do out of the Leopard KWS-3. And that's something to bear in mind that the, the Thumper, which a lot of people already own, is very, very similar to it. And that means that, is it worth picking up in terms of getting the KWS-3 if you have the Thumper? Probably not, because like I say, that, that 17,300 gold is a lot of money to spend on a tank. And like I say, you'll always want to wait for discounts. Always. 17,000 gold is way too much spent on one tank in this game. Especially when you can get big discounts and big bundles on tanks that give you more for that kind of money. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to send you over to the replays where you can go and make your own mind up on this tank. You can go see how it handles, see how the gun hits, see how the armor handles, all that good stuff. So as always, everybody, I will see you in the replays. So here we are in the replays with the Leopard KWS-3. It's the Leopard 2 KWS-3, but it just says Leopard KWS-3. Anyway, we're with the Leopard KWS-3. We're on this map, which is Serene Coast. And on Serene Coast, what I'm thinking of doing is going to the ridgeline at C1. 
And at C1, then I can, you know, go haul down, use the pretty good turret armor to my advantage, and just keep slapping out the rounds. And if you're looking at the reload going, why is this having 8.8 seconds? That's because this first replay is the very first game I played. And this one, I didn't put traction system on it because I didn't look at the track traverse. And I put vents on instead just to make sure that everything was as good as it could be. So realistically, this is your chance to see how the tank handles with vents. You see that the aim time's a little bit better, the DPM's a little bit better. Everything about the tank is just that little bit better because of the vents. But I ended up switching it out for the traction system because, naturally, I wanted to make sure that the track traverse was going to be better because it is really slow. It's very, very slow at traversing. And I did realise it in this game and was like, I'm really not turning very quickly. And, yeah. So we started this game so far. We've taken a hit from someone at the back. But we've got a shot into the weasel. Now I've got shots at another KWS-3 over there, which we slap a shot straight through the side of his armor. And we're just going to keep slowly but surely popping over, getting a shot in, and pulling back. Which is exactly kind of where you want to be in the Leopard KWS-3, because you're limiting them to shots at your turret, which is really good. And you can keep putting shots at them downrange. So we take a hit there, and I think, was that through my turret front? No, it was actually through the lower plate from the T-72BU. We try and get a shot at the weasel again, but unfortunately, we miss that shot. We're just keeping an eye on what is going off down there, so we've just... We're just trying our best to help these TDs out. These TDs are, well, the weasels, are causing chaos, as weasels always do. And three weasels running around like lunatics is basically keeping their entire team distracted, which is what you want to try and take advantage of. Because if you keep, if you take advantage of that, that means that they're not coming for you, and you can keep pummeling shots into them. It always happens in Era 3, when there's two or three weasel, weasels and they're running around in the enemy base, it keeps the whole team distracted and it gives you a chance to have a free farm. So we're just trying our best to keep shots flowing. We get shot into the BMP3. We're up to 4.1k damage, 2.3k assistance. We were spotting some of them. We'd have tracked one or two of them. And we're just trying to get shot in to shut down the BMP3. No escape for you, Mr. BMP3. And we get rid of him. Now looking for shots into the MBT70 who's charging. I was hoping to track the MBT70 if I could, but uh, it didn't happen. We're looking for the shot into his upper plate, which we slap in. Unfortunately, we don't roll high enough to kill him, but naturally, we, we weren't going to roll high enough to kill him. And he is still charging after us. We're not really going to struggle to pen him unless we hit a bad angle, like we just did. He's not going to pen me from the front. He's using his auto cannon at the minute, but he's not actually going to penetrate us whatsoever from the front. We go for the shot, and unfortunately, just as we fire there, the Leclerc ends up hitting him. The Object 292 just decides to full send, which is was a bad thing for him to do because now he's full sent into like four tanks and we're just going to keep him pinned unfortunately he does end up i don't think he penned us there i think he actually just hey he does but he does some damage we end up losing our gunner to the t72bu who's decided that it's a good idea to also full send again into the three tanks on his todd and we're just going to keep trying to keep the gun going because at this point i'm going well i'm dead there, there is no hope for me here the, the t72bu bounces and we're just, again, trying to help our Leclerc out, trying to help our friends out against this BU if we can. We try and get shot into his upper plate, but unfortunately, just because of the angle, we bounce. But we don't die, so it's a good time. I thought at that point my goose was cooked, but it clearly wasn't done in the oven yet. So we're up to 8.6k damage with 3k assistance. We're going to poke over, see if we can get shot into the BU again to shut him down, which we do. We get rid of the BU there. Just waiting on the reload now, and I realise, oh no, that's a weasel. Thankfully he misses. We try and get a free aim shot into him, but unfortunately we miss yet again. And oh no, here comes another one. We get a shot into his upper plate, which is glorious. He pulls back, pops smoke, and we're just being careful of that other weasel that's going around behind us. The... Other tanks that were with us have actually run away and gone back towards the base in the heavy tank and the TD, which means that we're now all alone on this flank, and we've got a weasel coming after us. We try and go for the free aim shot. Unfortunately, it misses. And, well, this time our goose is definitely ready to get out of the oven, and we are dead. And, unfortunately, we lost that game as well, and we finished the game with the two kills, 9.3k damage, 3k assist, 2.2k blocked. With 746 base XP. A pretty decent game there for the KWS3 on a loss. It pretty much epitomised the KWS3 that game. Where we managed to, you know, just keep the gun working over. Keep slapping shots out. And unfortunately we ended up just to come into the fact that our team had died. And there was too many left on the enemy team to sort out. And we died to a weasel. Which is pretty standard for an Era 3 tank. 
So we're on to the second game, and the second game we are on Siegfried Line. And on Siegfried Line, what I want to try and do is go towards the bunker at C6. From there, try and see if I can shoot anything across the field, and then I can move in towards the town and try and start getting some decent shots out with this gun into the town. As you can see, when we're going uphill, we don't really have the speed. We are a little bit slower with going up the hill. It's because it's not... It, the mobility of it is good, right? 68 kph up to 75 with the traction system is still pretty damn good but when you do notice it's just a little bit more sluggish and slow when you're going over and up hills and ridge lines and stuff like that so we poke over on the ridge and we don't we get spotted but yet we do not see what is looking at us i'm trying to scan the horizon to see if i could see what it was but yeah we're just we're just not seeing it we're Try and get a shot into the Leopard 2A4 who was poking out, but unfortunately we ricocheted off his side. I imagined it was a weasel somewhere out in the field. And there we go, we get spotted at C3, and we, we just were never going to see that unless we actually knew exactly where he was. We get in to try and get a shot into this Leopard 2A4, which we do, and he gets finished by the 477A. Our whole team is on this little corner where we are, so you know what? We're going to try and flank round and go around the other side so that we're not fighting and jostling with about four or five tanks to get shots. We put a shot straight through the lower plate of the Leclerc, though. I'm just keeping my eye out on the right-hand side in case of weasels. Essentially, always on the lookout for weasels because they are a nightmare and you never want to give them a free chance. Just looking for a shot on them below, but we can't quite find it because... We have too many people on this corner, essentially, trying to fight everything else. And I'm looking at this corner going, there's too many people here. I'm, You know what? The whole reason I left the other corner was because everyone was there. So, you know what? We're going to go back to the other corner where everyone has now vacated and go to fight on that corner where there's no one to try... Well, there's no one to get in the way, essentially. So we go for the drive wheel shot on the object 477A, which we track and pen. And because we've got the gun mounted on the left-hand side of this turret, it means that we can sort of do this little side-scraping maneuver and poke our gun around the corner without getting shot at. Unfortunately, the M1A2 decided that, well, you know what, we're just blocking the corner and got us around there. But it is what it is. We've managed to set the type, whatever it was, one of the Chinese tanks, on fire, which is great. We're going to poke around through the smoke, see if we can see him. There we go. And we shut down the Type 85-3. And we're up to 4.4k damage. Just waiting on our reload and for the smoke to dissipate, which it does. And we're going to put around and see if we can get some shots into this Leclerc now, who's not really expecting it. That would have been where the an ammo swapper would have been quite nice, to be able to slap the 320 pen Hesh rounds into there for that you know, into that guy for 870 damage. Because we had his ass, we would have been able to pen that with Hesh, which would, would have been glorious, but yeah, hey, hey, hey ho, is what it is. Wait for the reload, and we shut down the Leclerc. Next, we want to try and go after the 477A, possibly, but we see the the Leopard KWS-3. We try and get the shot into his turret front, and as you can see, with 844 pen, even firing at the front of that guy's turret, we still bounced. We go for the shot into the M1A2, but unfortunately, the shell just went really low. Just waiting for the gun to reload now to try and get another shot into this 1A2's turret front. But unfortunately, we didn't pen that either. We actually did viewport damage only. So we're going to just ignore that M1A2 and try and go around and get some shots into the M1A2 over there. Which we do get to shut him down for 6,000 damage. Then we realise, oh, the Malo's still alive. Oh, hello, Mr. Malo. Just uh, let me, you know, bang. Goodbye. And we get rid of the other big pest. It's the big pest, little pest with the Malo's and Weasels. And we get rid of the... Malo. Now there's one, well, there's three tanks left on the enemy team. There's a light tank, a tank destroyer, and this heavy in the M1A2. Because he's hauled down, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare for us to pen. We may as well full send towards him. We've got the hit points, but so does he. But we can maneuver the engagement to get ourselves sort of hauled down, get some shots into him, and then when we need to pull back, we can pull back. So we get the shot into his upper plate there, which goes straight through. He's now being yellowed by the Marder 183. We put a shot into his side, which tracks him in place, gives us some assistance. And now there's only one tank left on the enemy team. It's a weasel, which we can see running around. Was hoping that possibly he'd turn right into our shot, but unfortunately he didn't do that. And now he's just going to run around in circles and evade most of our team for a good another minute probably. But we're going to try and get there to just try and get a shot into it if we can. We're just keeping it in case he does decide to come up on top of the ridge line and give us a free shot. Because that would be glorious. Uh, it's like, Mr. Weasel, please let me shoot you. I would I would very kindly big, put a big 140mm shell into your tank. So you can see we're just trying to feather it, just trying to wait for it. But he's staying in that low ground where we can't quite get a shot at him. 
And he's getting machine gunned by the Mod 1A3 as well. He crashes himself into the side wall and the M1A1 ends up finishing him off. And we finish the game with a pretty damn nice total there. With the epic victory, 4 kills, 7.9k damage, 320 assistance, the first class... 1,465 base XP, a pretty decent game there for the Leopard KWS3. Once again, showing off what it's good at, which is just keep playing peekaboo. Just keep playing peekaboo. If you can do it on a ridge line, great, but six degrees of gun depression can be a bit of a pain. But if you're, especially if you're in a city environment like you saw there, you can poke around a corner, blap them for 700, pull back. And, you know, with the penetration being so good as well, you don't really have to worry too much about where you're hitting people half the time because the penetration is so good on this 140mm gun. So we're on the third replay, and the third replay is on Kaunas. And on Kaunas, we are going to go to the little position over here on this little ridge. Because from this little ridge, we can try and spot and cut out the people that cross along the AB line. So we get spotted, we see the weasel, but it's too late. We can't really do too much about it. The There's a TD and a light tank coming in around behind us, so I'm going to try and swivel, swivel. We heard an ATGM fire, so I thought, oh, it's fine. I don't have to turn my armor fully towards this weasel. No, it, the, the weasel still had a shell, and he got his for like 1,400 damage. But we do manage to get two shells into him, which is great. It's always great we can get those shots in. There was not much we could have done about that weasel, sadly. He just came out from behind us and got some big shots into the side of our tank. Or should I say, the big shot into a side of our tank, 1,400 damage. But we're up to 1,405 damage with those two shots we got into him. And now we're going to go into the middle to see if we can help our team over here. There's a heavy tank on the left. There's a TDs running around. And we can see some shots into the Macarver Mark III. And this game is very much where the gun just decides it doesn't really want to work. Because it can do that. And it's something to bear in mind. If you get the, sh the gun fully aimed in, it will hit the shots. But... Even not fully aimed in, it's still most of the tank enemy tank is in the aim circle, but it just it it does like to go a little bit low at times, and it can be a bit frustrating because of that. So we're going against this Macarver Mark III. We get most of the tank in the aim circle, aiming for the upper or lower plate because we can pen it, but we hit the turret, so we bounced, which is sad. Just aiming for the side of his turret now, which we fire at, and unfortunately we ricochet yet again on the Macarver Mark III. It's like, come on, gun, please. Behave. Now we've got shots at the Challenger 2. Had his whole lower plate. And unfortunately we hit the turret front and bounced. Now we've got shots at the M1A2. The whole of his side. And we went extremely low and did track damage only. Because we hit the part where there was only tracks and no hull. Now we're coming over. We go for the RBRT. And of course the RBRT hits. Why not? <laughs> Frustrating RNG. It is, it is what it is. Going for the RBRT on the move into the M1A2. And we shot him down. Because of course why not? RNG. Am I right? Am I right game? Am I right team? Am I right chat? Yes. I am right. RNG. It's a cruel mistress. It giveth and it taketh. We managed to shut down the Macarver Mark III. Now we're going for shots into the Magak 7C. So we get shot into his side. Just keeping myself in a position where it's going to be a little bit difficult for him to feather out exactly where he needs to hit me to pen me. And we're just trying our best to get the shots into him as he pokes around. So we get a nice shot into his track there, which tracks and pens him. Which is glorious because it keeps him in the right spot for me. We're, again, keeping ourselves in a position where it's very, very difficult for him to find the shot that he needs to to be able to pen us. And he drives all the way out. We track and pen him yet again, which tracks him and keeps him in place. There's now a heavy tank coming after him, so I'm not really too worried about the Magak. He shot my friend, and that means that we can shut down that Magak 7C. We're now going to go after the Type 90-2 who is on our right, who I really wanted to go after this guy in the Challenger the whole time, but I, the Magak stopped us from doing it. We get a nice shot RBRT'd into the Type 90. We give him a little bit of a ram. He bounces. Again, when I'm face-hugging him like this, I know I can go straight through his turret front. So we're just going to see if we can push him towards the edge, maybe push him off the edge of the cliff. That would be funny. Unfortunately, though, for the weasel, he's kind of self got him stuck behind him. <laughs> and oh, no. <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was really brutal for that poor weasel. <laughs> he ended up... Because we shoved him off the cliff. He ended up getting crushed by the Type 90. Oh, well, justice for pests. But, I mean, <laughs> that's the time. We get a nice shot there into the Challenger as he was crossing the open. That's where that 2,000 metres a second shell velocity is utterly beautiful. And it gets... A big shot into him who got shut down. Now there's only two tanks left. It's two weasels, of course. And I'm thinking, you know what? Let's go for the tactic of loading hash. Naturally, the 2,000 
APDS show velocity is going to help me a lot more to hit the weasels. But 1350 isn't bad. And if we get quite close, there's a chance, obviously, if we fought... Oh, that was so close! That was so close! Yeah, if we hit the Hesh round, we could pen it for 870. But if we hit it in the tracks, we could blow its tracks off. And then my whole team could just swarm it. And we don't have to suffer the pain of just driving around searching for a weasel. We go for the free aim shot into the weasel. And that shot just didn't, just didn't really go anywhere. I don't know. It looked like it probably should have at least splashed him a little bit. But it didn't, which means we missed. And the weasel got shut down by the Leopard KWS-3 on our team. Now there's only one tank left. It is another weasel, which means we're going to have to run around like lunatics to try and chase this guy. So we're just keeping our eye out on the horizon to see him. There we go. We see it cross. So we've got to try and find our spot to try and cut out or cut off this weasel from running away. So again, I'm thinking, no, maybe he's probably going to get there too quickly on that one. And yet he does. So we couldn't quite catch him off or cut him off at the turn, cut him off at the pass, whatever the phrase is. There, we're looking for the weasel now. It's like, where is it? Where's he gone? Is, it, is, is he already charged past? We get spotted, which means this is why Sixth Sense is always quite useful because we get spotted, which means we know the weasel was in our view range or was in our, within our spotting distance. And yeah, unfortunately, we missed the shot there again on that weasel, which means the weasel's now away. We can't actually see where this weasel's gone. We I, I just, no idea. And this is one of the pains of chasing a weasel and having, you know, weasels in general with that sort of camo, is that now, unless we actually see him physically, which is quite difficult to do with it being a small top, we get spotted. It's like, where is he? Was he on my left? Was he in the town somewhere? Because I couldn't see the guy anywhere along the AB line. But no, he actually is charging up the 1-2 the line. And he actually crossed the 1-2, which is why he spotted us. But yeah, the weasel's one of those tanks. It's just so silly. Like, they really need to nerf the camo of that thing. So you can at least spot it without having... Because the only way to spot a, pro a weasel is to proxy spot it. Which is really annoying. But finish the game with 1,365, oh sorry, 1,270 base XP. I was looking at the other KWS3. A decent amount of damage. And yeah, again, just showing what that KWS3 can do in that sort of game. And now we're on to the fourth and final replay of the video. And we are on this map, which is... Swamp! Swamp! Yes! Let's go, Brain! We're on Swamp. And on Swamp, what we're going to do is we're going to go to C7... Cut out the cross at, along the 9-0 line and see if we can get any shots at anyone that does decide to go up the 0. And that way, because look at this always happens on Swamp. It's the same, it's the exact same as Duckler Pass. Is that our whole team is going to charge up the B line and charge down the 9 line. That happens every single time. We all go around like a donut and it is exactly what... It, it's just sad reality. Oh, good night, Mr. Weasel. That's satisfying. But yeah. It's the sad reality of, of Era 3, to be honest. Era 3, for me, is just dreadful. And it's for stuff like this. It happens on many maps. Duckler Pass and Swamp are big ones for it. Where the team will just full send down one side and then straight to the cap, down the other. And the enemy team does the exact same. The wolf packs are just pain. They're just not fun to play with. Because it just feels like you're just chasing damage with your whole team. And it's just it's just not a fun experience, realistically. And that's part of the problem with Era 3. And then you've got tanks like the Molo and the Weasel that just compound problems. And it's just, ugh, realistically. It's just not fun. I just, I, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy Euro 3, really. And it's it's for stuff like like the wolf packing and like what's just happened. Because it's, it's a guarantee of what's going to happen, just like on Duckler Pass, that we've hit their cap, but we're not deciding to cap, which is a glorious thing. Because what can happen a lot of the time is the fact that our team will have charged down here. We've already hit their cap. Their cap is now completely unsafe. We could cap if we wanted to and just win the game, which happens probably 70% of the time in Euro 3, right? That... We've, we've taken their cap now. Their cap is, is ours for the win if we want to. They could do exactly the same to our cap. But thankfully, we are not capping. We, what we're trying to do is keep ourselves at the head of our team and get as much damage as we can before the enemy, well, before the advancing wolf pack come in and basically take the rest of it. I was trying to track that Leopard 2A5 before we got the shot in, but we actually went missed the track and penned his upper plate. We're just going to go past it, get the shot into his side with the RBRT, He's going to probably get shut down by my team, so I decided to ignore him because, once again, we're trying to advance ahead of the wolf pack. Try and keep ourselves ahead of it. Try and keep the damage flowing where we can. There's now a Leopard KWS3 in the open over here. He's all alone, so we get a nice shot into him on the move. He gets a shot into us because, naturally, we can just pen each other like it's nothing. 
And we go for that upper plate, lower plate. Go straight through his upper plate. He pens us through the upper plate because we've got that good a pen. And now we're in a position where I want to be. The gun is poking around the left-hand side of this little ridge line, making it as difficult as possible for him to actually be able to get a shot to pen us. And we get the free shot into him. Now going for the shot into the side of the MX-40 that was trying to cap. But unfortunately, capping by yourself here with the wolf pack coming is never going to work, Mr. MX-40. Just waiting on the reload. We get the shot into him as he's unspotted. And we notice there's three or four tanks in the swamp in the middle. So it's like, okay, you know what? Let's turn around to face these guys. Because hopefully my team might come and help, right? But I make a mistake. And that is, I don't go with the wolf pack. And again, it's another pain of Era 3. I don't go with the wolf pack, which then leads to a problem. The fact that my team has full sent after one TD at C5, and the rest of their team is all in this middle with me and two TDs, which is not a good time, especially when you've got a weasel coming after you. Thankfully, the weasel hits our plate. We get a shot through the thumper, and I realize, oh boy, this thumper's going to shred me. He's got all the hit points. He wins because we can both just penny each other automatically. So what we're going to do instead is use the fact that it's going to take him a while to turn around in this swampy ground, and get away from him if we can and try and help the TDs over here in the middle. We get a nice shot on the move into the Object 292, which sets him on fire. We're now going to try and get round to face this Chally 2, which is next to this rock. Our six degrees gun depression is letting us down a little bit there, but we get away from the Thumper and his ability to shoot us. We're now trying to swivel to face the Thumper if we can. The Weasel's come in. We try and get the free aim shot into the Weasel, but unfortunately we can't get that shot into him. And I'm thinking, oh goodness me. But thankfully the Weasel misses. But now the Chally 2 that was being chased by two TDs, they've run away from the Chally 2. And now the Chally 2 is looking at me. We get a shot into the rear of the weasel. But at this point, again, my goose is very well cooked. And we end up getting shut down. But thankfully, we do end up winning that game with the victory. We finish with second place, one kill, 10,740 damage, 1,359 base XP. Pretty damn nice game there for the Leopard K 2 KWS 3. And it's a pretty okay tank. It's just an era 3. So as always everybody, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.